Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and today we are creating another requested video for 504 Roan and in this video we're going to go a little deeper into debugging with Mono Develop. Okay, I'm actually continuing from my previous project just because I still have everything set up and essentially all we're going to do is add some more code and just a couple of testing conditions. Um, now, this example project is really simple and I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible because really all we care about in these tutorials are the debugging processes that we're going to be learning about. Now the first thing that you actually want to do is make sure that you have these debugging windows down here in your mono develop and to make sure that you have these windows you can just go up to view and then debug windows and you can just click on any of these and all of these should actually populate when you click on that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start a really quick debug debugging scenario by clicking run and attach the process and then clicking on the unity editor. So again, just click on run, attach the process and this window is going to pop up and when it does we're just going to click on unity editor and again you can just double click. Okay, and I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of this application output window. Now if I scroll over here and press play the game's going to start running, and this is, you know, obviously it's not doing anything because we don't have any breakpoints here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this, and then I'm going to add a breakpoint while it's paused, and press play. Okay, and as you can see, it immediately goes to that break right there. And that's because this is in the update method. And anytime you have a break in the update method, essentially you're going to run into that break every single frame, unless you have it inside of a condition and that condition is not being met every frame. Okay, and again, this is, I said this in the last video, and this is not a great way to test something, you know, because essentially the only reason why you test this is if you're getting some weird movement errors, you know, like you're moving two to the left instead of one, of the le one to the left or something like that. Um, okay, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and stop this test now and go back over. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this breakpoint. Okay, so now what I'm going to do this project is go ahead and add some more code. So we're going to be checking some input and adjusting values and checking some conditions and stuff like that. So um, I think it's like 12 lines of code or something like that. But, you know, it's just, a, it's not quite as simple, but it's still going to be some pretty simple stuff. So let's go ahead and get into that. And I'm going to do if access, and we're going to look at the vertical Oh, sorry. And say if that is greater than zero, so if we're pressing the up key here, then we want to increase the value of speed. So I'm going to say speed plus equals one. So we're just increasing the value of speed once. And then we're going to add a nested if here. And we're going to say if speed is greater than or equal to 20, then we're going to set speed equal to 20. Okay, so that's just a really basic if. Essentially what we're doing is we're getting the input on the up key and saying, you know, if that up key is pressed, then we're going to increase the value of speed. And that will occur as long as that up key is down. Um, so if I just hold the up key, it's just going to go like shoot straight up to 20. Um, and then what we actually are doing is we're saying if speed is greater than or equal to 20, then we need to set speed equal to 20. You know, so that way we're never going to just have, like, we're not going to have this infinitely increasing speed. Okay, the next thing I actually want to do is add an else if statement. And again, we're just going to do else if input dot get axis. And we're going to check the vertical axis again. And we're, this time we're going to do less than zero. Okay, so now if we're pressing the down key. And if we're pressing the down key, then we actually want to say speed minus equals one. So if we're pressing the down key, we want to decrease the speed. And if speed is less than or equal to zero, we're going to set speed equal to zero. Oop. Okay. And essentially we're doing that because we don't want to start moving backwards. You know, so if you have a negative value, then you'll start moving um, backwards instead of forwards. So we're just making sure that we can't go beneath zero, so we never move backwards. Okay. And I'm just going to do an else statement here. This else statement is just going to do nothing. Okay. And then again, that last line, transform.position plus equals transform.forward times speed times time dot delta time is just continuously moving us forward. Okay, now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click save here and I'm going to go back to the game and I just want to test to make sure everything's working. So I press the play button 
and I hold down the up key and you can see I'm, I'm holding it down right now and I'm not going any faster. But if I hold the down key, then I slow down to a stop. So again, everything seems to be working here. You know, I can just very easily modify these values up and down. And now I'm just going to click on the play button again. Okay, so going back to the code. All right, so that's going to do it for the code. Let's go ahead and set up some break, break points here. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a break point on lines 10, line 16, and line 22. And let's go ahead and put one on 26 as well. Um, and so this is going to cover all of our if statements and the transform.position statement. And, you know, this is probably, again, it's not a great test. I just kind of want to show you guys, you know, what's going to happen with this. Okay, and so what I'm going to actually go ahead and do is I'm going to click on the run again, and I'm going to attach it to a process. We're going to click on Unity Editor. Exit out of that. Okay, and I'm going to make sure I press play on the game. Okay, so now the game is actually going, and as you can see, we've actually hit our first breakpoint here. Okay, and that again is just happening because we're in the update method. So this is going to essentially break every frame. And as you can see down here, I've actually got this dot transform dot position inside of my watch frame watch panel. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and add another one, and it's just going to be this dot speed. Okay, and I'm just adding this one. Um, just so we can watch and sort of see what's going on here. And actually what I, what I want to do is go ahead and show you guys the step into, and if you step into with this breakpoint, it's actually going to go ahead and go down to the next else if, which is not really what we want to have happen with a step into. So again, step into, this one's going to go all the way down to the transform.position, and that's happening because the else is not doing anything. Okay, and again, if I just click play again, it's just going to keep going through this endless loop, you know, and that's not really beneficial to us. It's not really telling us anything. We're not learning about what the values are doing. We can't change the values because, you know, there's, I don't have time to go back to the game, press up, you know, because it's always going to get caught before I get to press up. So what we actually want to do here is click on this stop button. And again, just end the game. And I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the breakpoints on line 22 and 26 because we know what this uh, line on 26 is doing. Essentially this is just moving us forward and 22 isn't doing anything so I don't need to watch that anyways. What I am going to do though is I'm going to edit the breakpoints on lines 10 and 16 and to edit a breakpoint you can just right click on it and do breakpoint properties and this is actually a really powerful tool um, and it's a lot of fun to play around with but what you can do is you can look at the condition okay and the condition right now is set to always break so every time we get to this line, it's going to break. And that's really not beneficial in most uh, cases. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to change this to break when condition is true. And when you click this, you can see that this condition expression becomes available. And when that becomes available, you know, you can input some code in here. And what I'm going to do is say input dot get access vertical is greater than zero. So again, all this is doing is checking to see if I'm pressing the up key or the W key. Okay, and then you can also change this action. So this action is just what happens, you know, what do I need to do when this condition is true? And you can either do a break, which is going to stop, or you can write an expression to the output. And this, again, is not as useful. You know, you could do a debug.log, which will achieve sort of the same thing, or you could do a break, a break you know, for this example, we're just going to use break. Okay, I'm just going to click on OK here. And then I'm going to edit 16, the breakpoint on 16, and we're going to do break when condition is true again. And it's just going to be input dot get axis vertical. And we're going to say less than zero here. Okay, now that we have that here, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now what I'm actually going to do is run and attach the process again. And when the window pops up, again, just click on Unity Editor. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Play. Okay, and now our game is actually running. You know, it's not stopping every frame, which is really annoying. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this, uh, or press my up key. And when I do that, it goes back to Mono Develop and stops at line 10, which is exactly what it should be doing, you know. And since we've stopped at line 10, what I'm actually going to show you now is the step into. So when you click on the step into now, it's going to take us inside of this if statement. 
So when we step into that, we see we're seeing that we're going to line 11. It's checking, you know, it's going to essentially in increase the value of speed. So when I click on this again, if we look down, we can see that speed has changed to 11. And it, again, it's just going to check to see if speed is greater than or equal to 20. Okay, it isn't. So, you know, again, it's just going to look. It's not equal to 20, so we're going to go ahead and step down again. It's going to take us to the transform.position. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click play again. Okay, and if I go back to the game, I'm just going to press the down key this time. Okay, and when I do that, you know, it's going to take us to the breakpoint at 16, which is exactly what we expected. So I can go ahead and again just click through the step into. and it It's going to decrease the value of speed, so now speed is 10 again. And, you know, that's just a, a much better scenario for testing. You know, it's not looking at every frame, really. I mean, it kind of is once you press that button, then we start moving, you know, along a single frame. But it's not stopping every frame. So it's a much truer test of the game. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on the stop button now and make sure I go back to the game and stop the game. And another thing that we can actually do here is we can add breakpoints at line 12 and line 18. And again, these are just going to check um, the, the value of speed and say if speed is greater than or equal to 20, then we need to do a break or do some output, something like that. Um, but again, that's sort of exactly what I just showed you, right? Like it would just be creating the breakpoint, making it a conditional breakpoint, and then adding the condition there. Now, I do want to go into some basic error checking, and this is actually really difficult to do on purpose. You know, it's hard to write errors on purpose. So I will keep my eye out for more errors in the future. Um, so we may do more of these videos if I can find some better examples, but for now, I just have a basic example. Like, for example, if we change the line 13 to say speed equals equals 20. Okay, okay and I'm gonna click save here, and I'm gonna go back to the game. And now we can see that we do have an error here. And this is, again, this is really obvious. Um, you know, Unity actually gives you the line that the error is on, so it's on line 13. So actually, if I go ahead and actually double click this, it'll take me directly over to the error. And, you know, just looking at this, I can tell I need to change it. Uh, I don't really have a better example of error checking at this point, but I will definitely keep this in mind while doing other tutorials so that we can cover that in greater detail. For now, I think I've covered a few pretty cool tricks in debugging. Again, thanks to 504 Roan for the request, and if you have a video that you would like to see in the future, or if you're having some issues with something that you are working on, definitely send us a message and we will do our best to help you fix it. As always, thanks for watching, and this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial.